Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. I think we're on vlog 15. Hope you're all staying safe. This is going to be a longer video and I'm going to go over everything I'm really doing to kind of create two acres of food. A lot of new people because of the healthcare crisis are getting into gardening. And I just want to say 99% of the people I interact with of fellow gardeners have been wonderful. 1% have been kind of making fun of people for not being ready. Stop that. That's that's just ridiculous. The gardeners that I interact with, we're a wonderful community. I'd like that to come through in this vlog. So if you want to leave tips for new people just getting started in the comments, that would be great. So let's start with seed starting. These are all my different seed starts that I've started inside. And a question I get a lot is, why do you want to start seeds indoors? Or why do you want to start them outdoors? The, this group here has actually been all sown outside meaning I put them into the containers, I move them in and out of the house. You can see how well, well they're doing. These are cool weather crops. The reason you do this, because there's 144 cells in here, all managed within this little spot. I can take them inside when it gets cold at night, give them the warmth of the house, they sprout, and when they're a little bit bigger, same process. These were plants that I started on February 24th. It's April 12th now. And these can just be popped into the garden. I'll be doing a whole series on that. Cold weather crops. Cold weather crops can take a frost. Here's seed starting done with tomatoes. And look how well they're doing. And I believe these were started maybe six weeks ago. <coughs> Actually, they were started in the video series I did when I did these. So on February 24th. These are going to be ready to go in the ground um, in two weeks. They could go in now. Again, a lot of plants, I can care for them all in this space. That's why you seed start a lot of them rather than direct sow them into the ground. If you were to direct sow all these out into the ground, you got to go out there and take care of them at times. Seed start them. All done by just moving these plants in and out, so you don't really need expensive grow lights. Let's walk over to my uh, smaller cottage garden, and I'll talk to you about strawberries and raspberries and how to... So let me just give a quick walk through here. These were all started without grow lights. You just move them in and outdoors based on temperature. These were just started again. Outdoors, no grow lights. I move them in and out. And these are plants that we're all started indoors. They're much bigger. These are artichokes, so they're getting a little bit yellow. Need some fertilizer, but I'll be planting artichokes. I'll show you how to do that. And tons of mint, oregano, lavender, lemon balm, rosemary. You can save a lot of money by just starting your own herbs indoors. These were started about 12 weeks, 12 weeks ago under grow lights, but if you go to a store, they're easily two, three dollars just a plant. I must have 72 plants in there, maybe cost 10 bucks at most to start it myself. And this is how you can save a lot of money. It costs some money to get strawberries and raspberry plants. And you can see some strawberry plants right there. I'll show you where they're coming from. So last year I planted two four by four beds with strawberries right there. And you can see all around the bed they're reproducing and spreading out. And that's what they did over the fall and winter. I'll dig those up and put them in other places. So they reproduce, fill up a bed space, and a year later you're gonna have so many different, or you're gonna have so many strawberry plants, you can put them anywhere. Those are raspberry plants. I'm doing the same thing. And they are creeping over and going out the side of the fence. So my plan is to really make this two acres an edible landscape. So the raspberries and strawberries will go different places and these will be my beds probably for another year where I just let these plants reproduce and then I move the plants to other parts of the garden. That is a hungry bin worm composter. I'm going to be doing worm composting this year. I do sell those at my seed shop now if you're interested. Um, I'm going to do the complete setup, do a whole video series on it. Right now it's a little bit too cold but in a week or two I'm going to start videos on worm composting and using hungry bins. Let's go over to the main garden. Oh wait, before I get there, one more thing. Along this side, and you're going to see the strawberries creeping out along here. These are goji berries, which um, came out of those boxes you get at Home Depot. That was one. They're $9.95. These are second year plants. Look how big they got. 
Now, I didn't realize, because I, I thought it was just going to be a bush, a berry plant. These are trees, so I'm going to have to figure out what to do with these, prune them in some way. But they were $9.95 just for the little stick you get at Home Depot. Um, I started them indoors, brought them outside, and you can see now I have four goji berry trees that are doing really well. And they really produce tons of berries. Mixed all in the bottom here, I have different plants, but back there, that's thyme. So I intermix thyme, oregano in my bedding plants. They stay contained. Um, and you can harvest them as you wish. Some asparagus for a future video. This is a grapevine growing in a large container. So grapes are a great addition to your garden. Let's move past the daffodils and over to the main garden. If you're making your first garden or if you're building your first garden, you have to pay attention to what you have around. If you've got rabbits and you have deer, you probably need some kind of fencing. Now, you don't need a garden this big. Don't get overwhelmed if you're just seeing my channel for the first time. Just pick pieces of the garden you like. However, this is outside my fencing. These are onions in here, leeks, garlic, more onions, more leeks, and deer and rabbit. Rabbits tend to leave them alone, so you can grow those in a place where you might um, well, you can grow them in a place where you have deer and rabbits because you're going to leave them alone. All right, coming inside the garden, you're going to see all kinds of different containers, raised beds. A lot of you have seen those already, um, but I'm going to show you what I'm doing in here. I just dropped uh, tons of horse manure all over the garden from a pile that I got um, from a truckload, actually two truckloads I got from a local horse farm. So if you are looking for ways to compost, save a lot of money, check out your local farm areas and see what they have. Now, when we get to the manures, I will tell you what's really important about them. Container gardening, 22 gallon containers, holes in the bottom. These are all kinds of different greens. These were overwintered kales, cabbages, and broccoli. These are all gonna come out today and I'm gonna be putting in those cool other crops that you just saw on my deck into here and they will grow for the next year and they'll give me plenty of greens for the season. These are radishes, they're doing really well, all thinned down. I can already see one forming. That's gonna get twice as big. And the whole key for radishes is do not fertilize them. The soil is set up fine from last year. Don't add nitrogen to this, don't give them the fish emulsion. You're gonna end up with lots of leaves and smaller radishes, arugula in the back. This is a space that was going to be for zucchini and squash. This is just a plain old earth bed. This is what I recommend if you're just gardening for the first time. You don't need to do any of this stuff over here. You can just do a three foot wide mounded bed plant in there and I'll be showing you how to take care of that. So this was going to be squash and zucchini, but for friends and neighbors, we're not going to run out of food with everything that's going on with the coronavirus, but we may have delays and it may be hard to get fresh produce. So these are all different greens that I'm gonna grow this year and share with family and friends. I just wanted to cut in too, for your leafy greens, not your kales, broccoli, cabbage, but for lettuces, arugula, spinach, I'm doing a series on container gardening and flower box gardening. I made these, but these are all transplants of different lettuces, arugula, and spinach, and you can grow in something like this. These are about six inches deep, plenty of soil, so if you don't have a lot of room, you can set up flower boxes like this. And this box actually only costs $6 to build. I'm gonna do several of them and put them along here in different places. Cabbages in there, different greens in there. You can see the smaller plants. And incidentally, those are sunflowers that fell from last year We've had several frosts. They're surviving, so I guess smaller sunflower plants can take a frost. I didn't know that. So I'm gonna leave a couple of those in there because they fought over the winter to survive. I'm not gonna pull them out. This is all of the horse manure. So my beds are set up. They're ready for the warm weather crops. And the whole key is if you're gonna use manures, you have to make sure 
your manures are 100% composted down, that they've fully broken down, they can't break down anymore. And for horse manure and other manures, the farmers usually take them, put them in a pile. Two years later, they're ready to go. So this is two-year-old horse manure. I'm just dropping it right on top of the beds. I'm gonna work it into the soil. You can actually grow right in this when it's fully aged and fully composted and broken down. So that can be a little bit confusing. So if you're buying bagged compost, sometimes the materials aren't 100% composted down. They're in the process of composting. They still have a ways to go. If you use manures in your garden and you plant into it and it's not fully broken down, the microbiology tries to break it down, pulls nitrogen away from your plants, from the soil, and your plants struggle. So you wanna make sure wherever you're getting your manures from, you know that it's 100% composted, 100% broken down. Here's some greens that I started indoors under grow lights and I just want to be clear again, you don't need grow lights to seed start your cool weather crops or any crops really. You can do what I did with the example of the plants on the deck. You just put them out during the day when it's above freezing, bring them in at night when it gets colder and you can grow your seed starts that way. And it's just nice to be able to grab a cell of 72 plants and then just put them in where you want in your garden. Here's a quick trellis. If you want to grow cucumbers and melons, beans, growing them up a trellis will save you space. Wanted to show you what's in here real quick. These are potatoes right back there and over here. And there's basically two types of potatoes and I've been learning how to grow these over the last couple of years. You have your indeterminate type and you have determinate potatoes. So I recommend for something like this, you want a determinate variety, which means you basically plant the potatoes down at six or eight inches. They set out roots, they make potatoes, and you harvest them. You can get the indeterminate variety, which is the kind that keeps vining up, and then you mound over as the vine gets taller, and they send out roots and potatoes all over the place. So you get more that way, but they're a little bit more work. So determinate variety, indeterminate type potatoes, a good example, I believe, don't quote me, but Red Pontiac and uh, Yukon Gold are great determinate type potatoes for your garden. This is a vertical growing system from Greenstock. I am affiliated with them. In the description of the video, there's a coupon in case you're inter interested in picking this up. You'll save some money. But look how well the lettuces are doing. Down in the bottom, I have lettuce and peas. And this is just a great way to grow in a three by three foot footprint. So if you're just starting, you could grow in a tower like this. This is just potting mix in there from a bag, or you can make your own more cheaply, 50% peat moss, 50% any earth, some organic fertilizers. I have videos on how to set that up. And actually I'll be doing a whole video series on container gardening, and we're gonna be refreshing the soil in the next video this week. Different containers. You can grow in there for sure. Here is my blueberry or my fruit section. There's probably, I think, 15 blueberry bushes in there. Different varieties. You want different varieties of blueberries so they cross-pollinate. You get more blueberries. They're plumper. You don't want all the same variety. Blackberries over here. These are 10-gallon fabric pots. These are all peas in there, probably 10 to 12 peas growing in there now. I am affiliated with Root Pouch. I highly recommend them. You can pick these up at my seed shop now. If not, in the next couple of hours by this evening, we're just putting them on. I'm gonna be selling 10 gallon pots, which are perfect for growing just about anything, and five gallon pots, which are perfect for uh, peppers. I'll be doing a whole series, again, like I said, on container gardening and how to grow in the fabric pots. So here's one reason why I like using the pouches, because I can just set up 10 right in here among the blueberries, and they're real easy to move. These are actually all planted with shredded hardwood, um, which I've talked about in different videos, but you can just use any potting mix or make your own in here. So this space is really maximized with the blueberries, blackberries back there. Along the side of the fence are my hops plants, which are doing really well. But I'll be able to move these 10 gallon and future five gallon pots in and out in different spaces through my garden and maximize the space. Spinning around here, we're at about 
the middle of April and I tried to rush out some tomato plants just to reaffirm that tomato plants <laughs> don't like the cold, they don't like the frost. Even with protection, they're getting a little beat up. That's probably a little bit of leaf spot on there, if not something from the humidity. But the plants just aren't thriving. It's just too cold for them. So, lesson learned, I can get these out early because my goal is to have them climb up this trellis. But I think I put these out like April 1 or a little bit sooner. Just not worth it. They're not going to do anything. So, for my zone, Maryland Zone 7, April 15th, with some protection, I should get tomato plants or I should get tomatoes early this year, sometime in May, and that's my goal. I want to be harvesting tomatoes in May. Okay, let's move over to the other side. So as we walk over for the new gardeners, you're going to see all kinds of different ways to grow plants. I recommend just dig a space. You always want your space to be not more than four feet wide because your arms are two feet, and therefore you can reach in from any side, tend to the plants without walking in them. Here's a new bed area that I just built. These are raised beds. There's benefits to raised beds as they drain better, they warm sooner, and they allow you to kind of contain all your resources into a small space and you can grow that way. So these are two feet wide, six feet long, and they're actually filled with shredded hardwood, double shredded hardwood, and then horse manure. And I do alternating layers. You don't need to do that now if you're just getting started. This is something you can do if you find out you really enjoy it and you want to expand. That's just one way to fill the beds. More containers. That's an asparagus patch along there. If you've not seen asparagus before, that's a purple passion asparagus. This is a great way to start a first garden. These are containers. These are just nursery pots that I've collected from family and friends. The bottoms are cut out. I sink them halfway down. I put all the good resources into the pot. Last year it was two pepper plants per pot all the way down and I got more peppers than I could use or give away. So this year it's going to be peppers, then some sort of green, peppers, some sort of green. This way I have the leafy greens going and like I said I can share them with family and friends. All kinds of different raised beds, framed beds. You can pick whatever works. Again across the way, that's what I really recommend if you're just getting started, those mounded beds. If anybody watching who has experienced gardening, please feel free to give tips and encourage people that are just getting started for the first time, that are overwhelmed with the health care crisis, want to do something creative, want to add you know, to their food supply. I think it's wonderful that more people are interested. I wish it wasn't for the reason that it was, but I think people are going to find that they can really do this and it's going to help them with their life quality going down the line. Kohlrabi, broccoli, all in a raised bed. All right, let's walk over to that composting side. Now you do need more space for composting. If you can't compost, you don't have to. This is called cold composting and I'm just layering different, um, really refuse, different plant that I'm pulling out of the garden leaves into here. Sprinkled across the top of that is wood ash that adds uh, potassium to your compost pile into your garden. But you can just pile in your organic matter over a year it'll break down and the stuff on the bottom gets eaten by worms. You turn it over, a year or two later you have great compost. Cold composting, that's the slower way to do it. This was the beginnings of hot composting. This was uh, layers of fresh grass that I just cut in leaves and it's broken down a quarter of the way. It has a lot more to go, but this is only 10 days old. So hot composting will speed up the process. If I was doing it 100% the right way, Within 30 days I would have compost, but that was just an experiment to get it set up. You don't need a composting station like this that's this big. You know, you can see all the debris. These are going to be my browns for when I have all this cut grass and I can really get the hot, hot composting going. I'll be doing a series on this. You could use the Hungry Bin Worm Bin if you just want to compost your uh, vegetable waste and different greens from around the area in that bin and you'll get plenty of worm compost and you can use that for containers. Composting can wait. If you just want to get plants growing, you just want to get leafy greens growing, don't worry about compost right now. Do that later. Here's the smaller bed I've been showing in a lot of videos. I'll just show you a quick look in there. Oh, I want to show you the mushrooms I'm growing. I talked about that before. 
couple of framed beds. These were all direct. These are all seeds that were directly sown. They're doing well. These are going to get the transplants. Different bag products you can buy. I have videos that talk about all that. They can be kind of expensive. That's probably the most expensive way to fill your beds. Those are radishes. And right in here, I'm trying to grow mushrooms. And those are lion's manes. So they're starting to come up. We'll see how they do. But I've seeded, well, I put in um, mushroom plugs in here, wine caps and lion's mane, and I'll see what grows out of here. Hopefully I'll have mushrooms. Let's go over to my fruit trees. So I have three areas of fruit trees. These are my apple trees. Some of them are dwarf varieties. They're about 50 bucks. They're a little bit expensive, but I recommend actually Home Depot has great trees for 50 bucks. These are second year trees. Didn't get any apples last year, but I got peaches and pears off of other trees. But I have three fruit trees in here. This is all set up with different plants that will attract butterflies and beneficial insects. Let's walk over here along the fence line. Here's the grape I was talking about. Are blueberry bushes. More blueberry bushes mixed into the landscape of where maybe you would traditionally just put bushes for foliage. So everything that's in a cage are blueberries. Now rabbits will come and eat the tops of the blueberries down, so the cage has to be in there until they get about this size. Interplanted between there, more raspberries. I mean, <laughs> more strawberries, and they did really, really well. When we come down to the other side that I tried to duplicate that with, with raspberry plants and strawberry plants, it was a fail, and I'll tell you why. It's right up here. So coming in on this side, this should be as thick as the strawberries we just saw. There's some raspberry canes in there. So basically, this just stays too wet for the strawberry plants. The drainage from the gutters is right there under the rocks. I had to build that out. And what happens, it's right there. So what happens is this just stays really, really wet. So it wasn't a great environment for the strawberries. So that's something, you know, you're gonna kind of figure out trial and error. These are two pear trees that produce. They're starting to bloom. Keep walking down the fence line, and I think you're getting the idea. Throughout my property, I'm trying to put in vegetables, herbs, fruits, berries that I can get to and just harvest. On the right side there is a peach tree, and right all the way in the back is a contender peach, which I got at least 10, maybe 15 peaches off there from the uh, first planting, from the first time I put it into the ground. These got into the ground back in last March, April-ish, and I got peaches off it already. Trying to put in some raspberries and grapes along there, but my grand dog Tucker pulled them all out, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen there. Contender variety peach is probably the best peach I've ever tasted. So if you're looking for a peach, contender. It's really, really sweet and it produces quickly. More blueberry bushes in there. You can see the smaller ones. They weren't protected, so rabbits chewed them down. Okay, let's spin around here slowly and we'll finish up here. So this is one, two, three, four, five different fruit trees. Plenty of sun. I have three cherries and two plum trees in there. Actually, two cherries, two plums. The one cherry here died and I replaced it with another contender peach because I love them so much. You just wanna space them out. And really, two to three years after planting them, you're gonna have a nice little orchard. So thanks so much for watching. I'm in the process of turning the garage to barnyard red and taking care of that. I thought it would add some nice color to the homestead. If you're just getting into gardening, dig your space, learn through trial and error, use my channel, use some of the other great channels out there, find people that garden in your area, they will help you out. And if you're a community and you're a pretty tight community, each of you can grow something different and you can share. You don't have to do this on your own. You know, keep the social dis distancing for now, 
but you can work as a community. Someone can grow tomatoes and peppers. Other people can grow squash and zucchini and cucumbers. Some people, if they don't have a lot of space, could grow herbs and you can share. Again, thanks for watching. Please leave comments for our new gardeners that are joining our ranks. And please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.